shrink fits between pieces. Quite a while back we did one where we were shrinking a, <clears throat> a bearing race into a transfer case for a Volvo haul truck and off-road haul truck. And we used liquid nitrogen and I saw a lot of people in the comments saying warm up the housing. And a lot of times you can warm up your housing. It's the difference of temperature that gives you the difference in your clearance. How much the housing expands, how much your part shrinks down. Both of them make a difference. But a lot of times heating the housing is not a good option. Say we have this situation here which is somewhat like what we had for that transfer case actually. And let's say also that this is cast iron. So now this is cast iron. It's br possibly would want to break in here or permanently warp if we heat it up. Even heating it up consistently, it's problematic. There's a lot more metal in this part here. It's solid. This is thin, this open side. These two holes will not expand and stay round. They'll end up being out of round when you heat them. So you can sometimes heat this up and actually have less clearance in a point You'll have more clearance as an average, but less clearance in a point than you would before you heated it. So heating is not always going to help you. Cooling, and, and the same thing with cooling, if it is a different shape, but most of the time the piece you're putting in is round. We're usually working with round, so cooling works a lot of times. Another thing too, on your outer pieces that you're working on, a lot of them I'm working on something that I can't heat this up because I don't want to burn it. I don't want to disturb. Uh, it might be that you don't want to heat it up enough because of how much you would disturb the heat treating of it. It might be a matter of there's rubber seals on it. There's paint on it. There's a sealer. There's so many things that you can mess up by heating. And all in all, the, the liquid nitrogen did what we needed in that job. And we may have, may have gained a little more clearance had we gone ahead and heated the housing. It was somewhat out of shape, but not where it definitely would make it bad oval. So I probably would have gained a little clearance, but not as much as you would think because of how much out around it was in its shape. On the other hand of it though, I didn't need the extra clearance. Um, people saw it stick a little bit and that sticking was because we got crooked. You've got your hole you're going into and you got your piece that you're putting into it and it gets, well, let's say it gets crooked like that there. And so it gets crooked. And that's exaggerated, of course, but you, you tap on it one way or another. And we tapped it a little excessive, but you tap on it if it's not going in straight so that you can get it in right away. The real problem with this, because this clearance might only be a couple thousands here, is you've got contact. You've got contact. So now you have direct transfer of heat by conduction, and that's very quick. So you don't want to wait around for time, um, you know, while you, you think you can just move this over. If the two pieces were just a standard clearance not being made by heat, ex by expansion or contraction, if it was just a matter of putting two pieces together, say you had a 1,000th clearance, you can feel when it starts binding, you can move it over and you can put it in. But when it's by heating, as soon as this hits here, this outside piece starts sucking in on it and getting tighter. You need something to force it back into position really quick so that you don't have this suck in to where you're just messed, to where it's just a problem. Now, you can figure your expansion also. These are nominal figures here. And I usually, what I do is I usually use the uh, five zeros and six five and I usually use that for both steel and cast iron even though there's a slight difference as you see there. Brass and bronze, aluminum, these are out of the machinery's handbook and let's say for instance that we had a two inch hole and a 1.998 hole. Okay now we might as well call it two inch as far as how much expansion because that little bit doesn't make much difference. But let's say 
that we take our, let's, let's say it's steel, and I'm going to use my easier one. I go with one, two, three, four, five, six, five. <clears throat> I actually got that written on the wall in the other room um, <clears throat> for my expansion. And let's say that um, we, we're this one here. We've got two thousandths pressed there. Let's say that we want to have five thousandths as our difference. So uh, I should have done that the other way around, and in fact I will. I'm going to start out saying that I want five thousandths clearance, five thousandths of expansion. That's what I'm shooting for is the amount of expansion. So I'll take my five thousandths, I will divide it by my 0 0.0000065, and that will give me the degrees of difference that I need per inch or per foot if I wanted to measure in foot, feet, but per inch since we're working with inches. Now I've got two inches, so I can divide that by two again, and that gives me 384 degrees. That's the difference that I need. So if it's 70 degrees in here, I have to add my 70 degrees in the room, which is about what we're running today. So I need about 450 degrees to get my five thousandths total expansion, which will give me three thousandths clearance. And uh, it's handy to do the calculations in advance before you ruin something. But uh, there's, there's the numbers, fairly simple. Um, we dropped a piece together today just strictly using heat, no liquid nitrogen. I do both ways. Sometimes, sometimes I do both. You can have some real problems also with this. Um, just as another little side note, while we're talking about this, and I've actually alluded to it in some other videos a little bit, but let's, let's look at something here. Let's look at something. I like wet erasing the dry erase. Okay, I'm going to stop for just a second and think about this. Yep. This is a big solid coupling, super heavy. Now, little shaft in relation to it. It's very hard to get this hot quick enough that you don't transfer heat into the little shaft in this kind of a configuration. So there are times with a heat shrink where you can put it together, but you won't get it apart. You can, uh, now if you had to take this apart, you can do some things like make a block here, keep this into the shaft as cold as you can with liquid nitrogen, pour your heat into the rest of it. You might get lucky depending on how much, how tight it is, but you can put some things together to where it is so tight that that won't even do it. And what you end up having to do is just write off the shaft. You just drill out the shaft, make it into a piece of tubing so it doesn't have any strength and, and then make a new shaft generally, because usually your shaft is your cheaper part on this. Um, there's some things that it's, you can heat shrink it, you can put it together, but it just don't come apart. You know, if you have a little bit different here, and shorter makes it easier too. I've, I've drawn this long, but you know, this is not bad. We can heat this up, pull that off of there. It'll heat up, it'll pull off generally, not a problem. Another thing here, well, we're, we might as well cover as much as I can think about, which, that's terrible drawing. Okay, flat, doing that wrong direction. Okay, I'm going to do it different. Okay, we got this one. And we got a hole there, and we have an outer rim, and we have some pretty little spokes. 
and they're decorative even. There are all kinds of different dimensions here. Okay, now, we can heat this whole thing up in a furnace most of the time slowly and then drop it over a shaft. Go try and heat this with a torch, especially when this is cast iron, which most of these are, you're going to be wearing parts of those spokes. Um, first time I did this, we had a break here and here and part of the spoke and it went flying big time. It was a good thing that the man that was heating it was standing over here. I instructed him. I didn't know any better. Uh, it was a long time ago and uh, big mistake. Be very, very careful of spokes because you heat the spoke up, you've made expansion there you heat this up it wants to bow out because the spokes aren't warm you go to heat the middle up you break all the spokes there's just not an easy okay so we taught we were talking about i don't know where we got lost with the spokes broken but anyway the heat will break the spokes um, you can heat it up all together i run into this with locomotive work and I've got some I'm looking at again for a steam locomotive right now that we may end up doing some work on. Well, we're almost for sure that we're going to work on it. It's just a matter of how much we do for them, which is uh, we need to it, it needs some little more looking at to figure out what's the best to do there. Um, it's hard to hard to group and figure on some of that stuff when you want to keep original parts that are 120 years old and you also want to make it as nice to run as you can and parts and it's not just that you have the original parts but they've been modified multiple times so you're guessing what the original part is supposed to be uh okay spokes expansion you get a similar thing with uh, as far as difference in expansion and you have difference in expansion with your different materials too if you want to figure out your difference in expansion. You figure, let's say we have a piece of cast iron on the outside of a piece of aluminum. Well, we're kind of screwed. <laughs> you, can, you can put it together, but you're going to have problems. And in fact, I did that one too. I did that on a job just like this one. Yes, we had one of these. We did a bunch of work with some big spoked uh, pulleys for big cables at one time. It was for a uh, sawmill. And what we did, um, we were putting bushings at some of these. And one of them, we had a heavy bronze bushing to put in here. And so we, let's see, no, it wasn't in this. That was in a different piece because this one was where we broke out. The, no, it was a different piece, but the same, same idea. If you look at your brasses and bronze point four zeros and one versus five zeros and six five for steel we had a steel it was a steel hub it wasn't spoked like this it was just a steel hub another part of the machine and we heated up a bronze bushing dropped it in there uh not not the bronze we heated up the steel figured out our clearance for the steel dropped the bronze in there the bronze got hot from the steel it expanded out the two were tight come back to it after lunch and now the bronze falls through because the bronze expanded more when they were both hot and then it shrunk away because it squished the bronze. And you'll see this is a problem with a lot of aluminum engines. The extra expansion in the aluminum, it will ruin parts of the engine because of the, the aluminum cylinders expanding. You will squish the cylinders or you will overstress the bolts. There's ways to take care of that. But all of this makes a big difference that's that's more for engineering the thing but also for putting it together if we have cast iron again let's go back to our our, our two inch let's just go for our two inch expansion well no let me think about that because what we're really looking for and actually you don't even have to calculate each one out different what you can actually do is you could just plain subtract one from the other and you'd still know what your change per degree as far as the two of them goes because your cast iron will grow but your brass or your aluminum or whatever will grow more 
but you want the one that grows more to be on the outside if you're doing this heat shrink expansion. The one that grows less, if it's on the outside, you're going to have problems. Any questions, Bart? So the right answer for the bronze that got squished was to cool it instead of heating the assembly around it. Yeah, most likely. Um, most likely because the steel would not cool off enough to shrink that much, that, you that quick. Yeah. You would think. The, the normal thing is more a matter, we, we went to pressing them in after that. We just oh. forget the, <laughs> forget the heat, heat shrink in that direction. But yeah, you, you could cool it off. But you, you could have a situation where you would have a problem there too. Say, um, probably not though. You know, I really haven't, I've never had a problem with cooling it off and doing that. It would be cold. It's going to expand to where the steel is. But the problem would be if the steel ex shrunk down, oh, you know, if the true. steel got cold. But I don't think the steel is going to get cold that quick because it's still being reheated again on the outside. Um, the bronze as quickly would be losing. It would come down to where you could have a problem maybe if you had something really large. Say you had a, uh, but if it was really large, see then you have the same thing, Real, a large bronze in, re, in relation to the steel, then your steel is relatively weak. So your steel is not going to squish your bronze. And the little bit of extra movement on the steel is, is not going to stress it forever. So I don't know. I don't know if you would have a... Most of the time that's going to work. 